All right, everyone, thank you again for clicking on my video. And we are getting set up here. Let's talk about my EDC. I'm not some real popular <laughs> YouTuber by any means. And I know the EDC topic is something that is just beat all to heck uh, in the in the YouTuber world. People are always like, oh, you know, this is all the stuff I carry. Then they bring out this whole mountain of crap. And you're like, man, dude, you're not really carrying that every day or something like that. But, you know, I just wanted to give you what my EDC is. And those who don't know, EDC is everyday carry, right? And basically, it's something that's become popular in the last few years because all these tactical people are wanting to show all this cool stuff they carry every day. And I admit, I'm guilty. I'm one of those guys, too. But I will say, everything I carry, except with one exception, is something that's used every, just about every day, actually. Just about every day. So, let's jump into it. What's the most important thing? People say, oh man, it's going to be your knife or you know, it's going to be your, 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 your personal defense firearm or something like that. Here's the most important thing for a big guy. Ooh, look at that. It's a nasty old dirty belt. But let me tell you, when you're a sizable person like me and you wear your pants under your gut like I do and I have no butt to speak of, you got to keep your pants held up. So you've got to have a good belt. It took me a long time before I found a good belt, but I finally did. And this belt really could probably warrant its own video, in all honesty. It doesn't look like much, as you can see. But this belt is made, if I can keep from knocking my crap over, from seven, I think it's 17 and a half ounce or 19 ounce leather, I believe. Let me see if I can put something in perspective here to show you how thick that this belt is. Just about almost quarter inch thick, really. And it's a good, heavy, solid belt. And that's something that fat guys need. That or suspenders. And yeah, I used to wear suspenders a lot. But here lately, since I switched to wearing cargo pants, well, they're not cargo pants. They're the 511 whatever type pants. I've been mostly wearing a belt. But this is it. Hank's Belts, the Extreme. And they call it a 100-year belt. And they actually will give you, I think they give you a lifetime warranty. Or maybe it's a 100-year warranty on your belts. If they ever start to mess up on you or break down or anything like that, they'll fix them. I'm a big guy. And big guys know this is the most common wear point on your belt. I've been wearing this belt for, I guess, a couple of years now, and you can see that it's distorted, but there's no indications of the leather failing or anything. So I fully expect this big-ass belt, oh, I said that a word, sorry. I fully expect this belt to last me for a long time. That's the most important thing, folks. Keep your pants up. I'll show you the next item I used, most importantly, every day is this. What the heck is this? This is the Lucky Secura Key. And I do this because I, I've got a big set of keys like most people. And you'll, you'll see those in this video. But like most people, well, like most bigger guys like me, for some reason, I just don't, I just don't like having my keys in my pocket. So I'm one of those uh, I'm one of those cool dudes you walk around and see with their keys hanging off their belt. I bought this thing in 1990 or 91 when I worked at the Kmart Garden Center in Jonesboro, Arkansas. A long time ago. I haven't used it all these years, but I used it a lot back then. I've been using it for the last four or five years myself. But just just slides on your belt, and then as you can see, you've got a little clicky thing that holds your keys for you. So that's my next little doodad. Maybe I'll keep these lined up nice and neat up here. Let me show you the next thing that goes with that. My keys, please. 
Everybody carries keys, right? Yeah, no big deal. But I showed a couple of things. Obviously, my remote, my little handy dandy latch, so I can unhook these really quick. It's always a good idea to keep that locked up too, but I don't. Just your basic keys. I do have this little doodad on here. This is a uh, Olight. There it is. 1R2 EOS. But this is just a little keychain light, but I like it because it's rechargeable. You just use a little uh, uh, micro USB, I think is what they call that. Has a little light that comes on when you're charging, and once it turns green, it's fully charged. Another thing I like about this is I used to carry a lot of the uh, single AAA keychain lights. They would always come unscrewed and then fall apart. With this one, if it comes unscrewed, it doesn't. You don't lose pieces of it off of your uh, off your keys. You know, so you don't have to worry about that. This is another thing. I've been carrying one of these on my keychains for a long time. 15 years, maybe. Hell, maybe a little bit longer. But this is called Uncle Bill's Sliver Gripper. And what this is, is just a little pair of tweezers that you pull out. And let me tell you, these are really good tweezers for plucking splinters is what they're designed for. Looks like I might have dinged up my tip on mine a little bit. But they come in handy. Do I use them every day? No. But I do have these on here for a lot of years and have used them a lot. Probably the next thing I use most frequently, well, it's going to be a tie-out, probably. Either this, which this is just a, this is just a hanky. I always carry a hanky. Um or a bandana, whatever you want to call it. This happens to be one I'm carrying right now. Now, I'm not one of those, I don't want to call them idiots, but I'm not one of those guys that go out and spend 50, 60, 80 dollars on a special bandana. I get this particular one at the Army Surplus store for about $2. Uh, and it's an okay one, but normally, I like the bandanas that you get from Tractor Supply Company is the place that I get those from. And uh, let me show you one of them. This is one of the TSC ones, and it's by Habahank, 100% cotton, 100% cotton, made in USA. This one is one I just bought actually just last weekend. They're about three bucks at TSC. See, yeah, 299 right there. And I guess they're made exclusively for tractor supply. But these are real stiff, kind of, when you first get them. But after you wash them a time or two, they become nice and soft. And they are great bandanas. I've carried those for years. But every once in a while, I want to be kind of cool. And I'll get me a little camouflage one or something like that. But just a bandana. And... The next thing that's used probably most frequently is my leather one. Which one do you carry, Hillbilly? Well, everybody wants to know that. A Leatherman Free P4. And I believe I have a video out just with a review of this tool. And I've only carried this one for about a year, maybe a little bit longer. It wasn't too long after they came out that I started carrying uh, one of the Freeze before, my, before this one. I carried the uh, the wave, but you can do your googling and your YouTubing on these. They're, th this is a nice little multi tool. The only issue I have with it really is um, it's a little bit heavy, but I do belt carry it, and so that kind of offsets it. But even on my belt, sometimes it it is a little bit heavy. But the vast majority of the time, and and with that said, there is the rare day, maybe I don't know, maybe. A, a, 10 or 15 days throughout the year that I won't put this on for whatever reason, in which case I'll just carry a, a, a pocket knife. But the sheath I use, Benchcraft, I think, American Benchcraft. I got this off of Amazon. It was specifically designed for the uh, the Wave, and you can see it's not 
I mean, it's it's a pretty decent quality sheath. It's riveted together. You know, it has a pretty pretty decent snap on it. You know, pretty pretty nice leather, but it's not like some custom fit sheath for it. But I didn't like the little nylon sheath they gave me with the um, with the pre. So I upgraded to this leather one, and it's working out pretty good. I've had it, you know, just a couple of weeks after I got the free. But the next item that is probably used more frequently or most frequently will be this. Um, this one I haven't carried very long. You can tell it still looks in pretty decent shape. This is a Phoenix E12, but usually I'll carry some sort of a small single cell, uh, a double A. Usually I'll carry a double A uh, single cell light, and I think that's what it is. Let me, yeah, this is a double A. Always carry a lithium battery in it too, so you don't have to worry about it leaking. Plus, the lithium battery is a little bit lighter than the uh, than the regular alkaline. But I do like just carrying the simple ones. You know, this one has got a couple of brightness settings. You know, on the on the the switch, and that's it. Nothing fancy. Now, another thing I do like with this particular one is that it has a shielded button. You see that? So you really have to push down in the center of it to turn it on. So that helps cut back from your knife, I mean from your knife, from your flashlight from inadvertently getting turned on in your pocket. But this is a good little light. I like Phoenix. I like O-Lights as you saw in the other one. My light before this was um, one of those Surefires that you can use either a double in or a CR-123 if I remember right. But uh, this one, I like it because it's a little bit lighter, a little bit smaller. You know, it's it's a nice compact size. So that's been my EDC light for a few months now. And it, it's working out really good. But this will tend to change over time. But normally, yes, I always do try to have a flashlight of some side, of some type on me just in case this burns out or, you know, I don't have my keys with me or whatever reason. So next, next, next. Uh, frequently used would probably be my current carry knife is a Benchmade Phaeton. And those of you who are regular subs to my channel, you probably saw my review on this. This is a great little out the front knife. Um, I personally think the Benchmade quality is better than Ultratech for the most part. But I definitely like Benchmade's warranty more. You know, Benchmade will use just standard, um, you know, Allen head screws to where if you do need the services yourself, you can. And if you screw it up, you can send a bag of parts Benchmade and they'll put it back together for you. Uh, that's a lot easier than the uh, anti-tamper screws that Microtech uses. Now, I'm not bashing Microtech. I've had plenty of them. They're good knives. I carried a double-edged Ultratech for a lot of years, but it's just my personal preference has started to lean towards Benchmade on my outdoor fronts. Now, there is the rare occasion, I would say probably 15, 20 days out of the year, that I will carry a Spyderco Delica instead of this. Normally, that's a situation where I'm wearing like really lightweight hiking shorts, uh, bathing suit at the beach or something along those lines where I just want something with a smaller profile and lighter than this. But the vast majority of time, this is it. What do I use it for? Uh, well, I'm a fat guy, so I open up bags of jerky. I open up bags of potato chips with it. I will cut thick pieces of jerky with it, and I use it for opening. Actually, you know, really, if I have to open a box, I don't like getting this gunked up with tape. So really, if I have to open a box, usually I'll reach for my uh, Leatherman and I'll use um, the little, um, this blade, this little uh, serrated blade on it. And I'll admit, this is a bit cumbersome sometimes, um, you know, having both of these, but I carry this mainly because of the tools and the pliers when I need it. And I carry this just for everything that you use a knife for, for everyday purposes. Next, next, next. Well, a pin. I like to have a pin on me. I usually carry one of those um, space pins, one of the small ones that you can 
slip around and you know put the outside on but my wife surprised me with this pen here a few months ago so it's been my go-to carry and it is it's not a space pen, but it's a ride in the rain one it does have a pressurized cartridge like a space pen so you can ride in it in any direction or you know when it's wet and what have you and to go with it i usually try to carry a notepad of some sort this one is this one's fairly new actually i think i just replaced my my other one within the last month that's why this one does have hardly any signs of wear on it but yeah I like to carry a notepad with me just to keep notes on things like that. You never know when you'll have to leave a note for somebody or, uh, you know, take down some important lottery numbers or a license plate or something along those lines. Now, the next one is the one device that um, is used infrequently, as in very, very rarely, but I always carry it, and that is... Usually I'll carry a mini Bic, which this is this is the small one, this is the mini one, just in case I ever need to light something. Now, do I use it? Yeah. I tell you the most frequently used application for my lighter in my pocket is for fusing loose threads, like on my shirt or my pants or something like that. You know, when you have like a little loose thread somewhere and you need to, if it's a cotton thread, you can burn it off. Or if it's a nylon thread, you can fuse it down to where it's just uh, not so getting in the way. But sometimes I won't carry the big. Sometimes I'll carry this and I have never had any occasion to use this. But my wife gifted this to me a while back, and as a result, I always carry it with me. And this little doodad actually could use a video of its own. This is an Exotac uh, fire steel, in case you don't know. But what this does is basically you have a little fire steel. Now, how does it work? Well, you can take off this end two, like this, screw it on here. Then you got a longer fire head, and then you have a little striker right here, and you strike with it. Ah, fire! But uh, yeah, that's that's what that does. So, um, why do I carry this? Well, I know the odds are that I'll never be stranded out in the wilderness and have to have a fire starter with me. But it is just kind of cool, and it's kind of sentimental, like I said, because my uh, my lovely wife got this for me as a, as a gift, just a, one of those just-because gifts, if I remember right. And so it's nice to carry. Now, I will say, when I do go hiking or camping or something like that, uh, I do always make sure I have this in my pocket with me. And you've got a nice, you know, you've got a little length of paragraph cord if you ever need it to. Now, the last thing is always have some form of uh, personal defense, self-defense firearm. And this is obviously my no less used item, but it's the item that I always carry. So, to each their own on this, but you all know me, you know my channel, you know I'm a gun guy. Uh, I believe in carrying something to uh, defend myself if necessary. And what I'm currently carrying, uh, this one I've only been carrying actually for just a few months, you can tell because it's still in pretty decent shape, not real dirty, is a Ruger LCP2, um, this is the 380 caliber. I did carry the 22 long rifle one before this and switched to the uh, 380, mainly because my 22 version, I had a little bit of feeding issues with it. Now it would run reliably 90% of the time, but I prefer 100% on something that's gonna be such a critical part. So I don't carry any extra ammo. Um, I just carry the six plus one and um, you know, that's it. So. Um, I love guns. I love Ruger. Uh, I think this is a pretty solid choice. I do make sure I only carry it when it's holstered because I do carry it in condition one. So one thing you want to make sure of, especially on these LCP2s, they have a pretty light trigger pull. Make sure you always have that trigger covered when you're carrying it, folks. That is important. And uh, there's enough videos out there on the LCP2s. Y'all don't need to see any further hashing on that 
But, you know, I've been going through all these things, you know, most carried, most not. And I forgot one thing, and this is actually here in the last year or so, obviously, my most used item. Some type of a face mask. I don't like wearing them. Uh, but honestly, you know, I, and I don't want to get too political on this. You know, I had a, I had made some comments in one of my old videos encouraging the use of face masks. And that was, that video was done before face masks were uh, politicized. Is that a word? Politicized? Before they were made such a political statement versus a common sense statement. So I'm not going to say anything about this, you know, to each their own. If you want to wear one, great. If you don't, that's great too, you know, but uh, a lot of places I go, they do require to have one. And so that's why that's something that a lot of people in the last year, I'm sure have made part of their uh, EDC routine. So that is all folks. There's my junk pile every day on my person. Let me know what you guys think. You know, um, I know a lot of people probably EDC stuff every day and they don't even know it's called EDC. But uh, yeah, this is, I think, my basic assortment. And I am, you know, like I said, true to form. This is something, all this stuff is something that I really, truly do carry uh, every single day, except for the rare occasion where I might not carry this because of the way I might replace this with the Delica. And most of the time it's this but if it's not this it'll be this but 90 percent of the time it's a little mini bic in there let me know what y'all think if you have any questions on any of it give me a holler and again as always thanks for watching if you haven't subscribed go ahead and subscribe click that like button it really helps me out and we'll have some more videos coming for you soon y'all take care